So I'm, I'm going to do it on this channel, and uh, I'm also recorded separately um, for YouTube. Um, I'll uh, okay. So recording is started now. I, I haven't. I'm not quite sure how good it works to record on this channel. So um, I'll um, I'll have to try it out. But there's going to be a recording on YouTube as well. It's so on this channel. Just to make you aware, you can see the whole page, so you should be able to see um, all the comments and everything as well. Uh, obviously on YouTube you don't, so I'm going to take them out and it's, it's just going to be the, um, the slides itself. Uh, first of all, a very good morning to you guys. Um, and uh, a million apologies for last week. I sort of tried to figure out what went wrong and I think uh, it's, it was a combination of poor internet and um, the computer was struggling as well. I don't know what was going on with this. I spent a um, couple of hours afterwards and suddenly it was fine and it was responsive and worked really well, whereas before it wasn't responsive at all. So uh, I've got a different computer now. And this one is a bit more powerful, so I hope everything is OK. Uh, also, just to make you aware, it's just uh, we are just sort of, or I am just trying to, to get this going, this online training. And, um, and it's sort of teething problems. We don't know how well this conference software works. In, when, when, when I was trialing it, everything was OK, never had a problem. And then, um, you know, things happen, things, things occur. Okay, let's make a start. Uh, I don't know whether you can see this. Um, it's 40 slides, don't be too worried. Um, lots of them are just pictures of uh, different pumps and shafts and so on. And uh, what we're going to look at today is um, pumps and shafts. And you may wonder, what has this got to do with thermodynamics? Um, the, the answer is that um, it's, um, it's, it's about pumping liquids or gases uh, through systems and uh, those liquids maybe for cooling or for heating. So today we're just going to look at, uh, at liquids and pumps and next week we're going to look at uh, gas systems, you know, pumping gas and air through systems. And, <clears throat> and then we are, we are almost done with all the presentations and from then on it's just going to be a recapture of the whole unit and then it's exam preparation. And when you, I think, when you come back we've got about four weeks or something to get the exam done. So uh, it's, um, um, that's the plan so far. Okay, let's make a start, go through the slides. So it's about pumps and shafts. The, the criteria we're going to cover is 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and 4.4. And then next week is pretty much, uh, I think it's almost everything which is done, and then it, it literally is just recapture. Right, so I need to park my cursor in the right place. And the next slide. Does it work? And it doesn't work. Um, first problem. I've clicked it. I'm not sure whether I'm going to go about uh, several slides in a minute, but it doesn't respond. So this is the first problem. Maybe we have to change the software. Try one more time. Here we go. Yeah. So it took some time, but it got through. I uh, hope it doesn't go to slide number three and four in a minute. Uh, but anyway, I've clicked it several times, so that's a problem. So we've got 4.1, which is describe the application of different types of uh, pump. Uh, and then 4.2, describe the application of shaft seals. It's quite interesting as well. And it's very important when we look at thermodynamics and um, the kind of uh, you know, hot liquids and, um, and, um, and cold liquids as well we have to deal with. And... Anyway, we're going, to, we're going to look at this in a, in a minute. Explain the need for lubrication in systems for transporting fluids. And we're going to uh, focus a little bit on shaft seals, on the lubrication for them. And then describe equipment used for lubrication and seals and bearings. Yeah. So that's all we're going to cover today. OK, the next slide. Hopefully it works better. I'm waiting for the slide to come through. Um, Try again. Here we go. Um, first question, what is it called when we move a liquid or a gas for the purpose of either, either cooling 
or heating. So, um, question to you. What is it called? Any ideas? Uh, remember the three different types of uh, heat transfer? So what kind of heat transfer are we talking about here? Uh, feel free to type. Be brave. You can hear me, can't you? Uh, okay, do you know the answer? What is it? Is it uh, what magic heat transfer? Word starts, starts with C. Spot on convection. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, so it's convection. Um, got it. That, that was a little bit of a reminder. So anyway, that's what we are talking about. So when we are looking for, for heat transfer in pipes, and it could be cold or warm, uh, depending what liquid we are uh, we are pumping through, and we, we might want to cool some stuff, you might want to heat some stuff up, and and it's it's part of convection. The other two are um, uh, radiation, and uh, what's 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 the other one? I've forgotten it now. Anyway, um, radiation, and what's the last one? Help me. Starts with C as well. I got it now. I remember. Conduction. Spot on. Thank you. Uh, so always come back to this point. Okay, uh, let's see whether um, the slide goes on. The system is a little bit slow, but um, it at least it seems to work. Let me just uh, try again. Here we go. Uh, I, s I think I need to wait for the red dot to come on the um, when I move the mouse uh, on the on the thing. So the first question is, what is a, a centrifugal pump? So uh, we're looking at uh, through different, two different types of pumps. Yeah? That's uh, what, um, what we are considering today. One is centrifugal, um, and, uh, and then the other one is called displacement. OK, Dick, uh, thanks for the info. Yeah, if, if you've got problems with me, let me know. Um, as well, just just type a little thing in there so I realize what's going on. Um, so I, I just read deck deck saying uh, I keep getting dis disconnected. Okay. Anyway, let's let's move on. So uh, these are the two pumps, centrifugal and displacement, and they are sort of fundamentally different. And they all, you know, they've got certain purposes. One is very good for um, you know one type of uh, liquid. Uh, movement through a system, the other one is better for another type. And we're going to look at the, uh, the comparison in a minute. Uh, okay, uh, I'm just going to move on. Um, is it doing it? Next slide. So it should come now. It seems to have registered the click. Just waiting for it to come through. It's a uh, hmm, bit of a problem. I don't know what to do about this. Um, here we go, centrifugal pumps. Um, it's a machine with a rapidly rotating container that applies a centrifugal force to its contents, typically to separate fluids of different densities. For example, you've got cream and milk and so on, liquids from solids and so on. Now, that's a centrifuge. Yeah? Now, a centrifugal pump uses the same principle. So some liquid is pressed into it, and it, it sort of tries to generate some velocity, splashes it around, and forces it into, into an, an outlet. Um, it says here, a centrifugal pump is a machine that uses rotation to impart velocity to a liquid and then converts that velocity into flow. So it sounds very posh, but, but all it means is you squeeze some stuff in, some liquid goes in, and um, it uh, turns around, slushes it around. It's only got one way to go, and that is the outlet of the, of the pipe. Um, when I show you the picture, it'll be um, much more... Um, It'll be much easier to understand. Again, I'm trying to click and trying to get the next slide. So I'll try again. Should come. I should have registered the click. Mm, 
I have to say, I forgot. Um, I've got a laptop here, and I've got a, a separate mouse for that. Ah, here we go. That's it. And uh, probably would have worked better with the mouse. The the touchpad is a little bit, I don't know, insensitive. I think. Anyway, it says here, centrifugal pump is a machine. Every centrifugal pump includes an assembly of mechanical components that make operation of the pump possible. So the mechanical assembly includes, and this is all the stuff that's inside um, the pump. So we've got um, 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 a pump shaft yeah, that's, that's mounted on bearings, and we've got a sealing mechanism that keeps the pump from leaking excessively. And when we look at the seal, so it's um, you know putting the pump together, so normally you've got like a several sections of it and uh, and also several sections where the liquid is in but then the um the really nasty bit of pretty much every pump is um the shaft where um something is rotated like the the innards of the pump are rotated and um and that shaft needs sealing yeah and that's that's very often a big problem that um uh, that the shaft seal goes and and it starts leaking uh, we've got structural components designed to handle the stresses and loads imposed on the pump during operation. And then we've got wear surfaces that allow the pump to be repaired and returned to its original specifications. Yeah. So there are normally um, wear and tear parts within a pump. Uh, one of them, for example, and we're going to talk about it later, is uh, are the seals. And, um, and they're normally a sort of reasonably easy ways to dismantle the pump and change the seal and put it back together again. Okay, next one. Hey, this went really fast now. Maybe, maybe it goes better now. Okay, now this is the centrifugal pump, and um, let me just, uh, I don't know whether you can see the dot. Yeah, you, you should be able to see a dot, yeah. So let me just put the dot on, on here, on the top bit there. Very slowly, it's not very responsive to the system, but it does work. Um, okay, so that's suction, uh, which is generated. So. Uh, on the horizontal line there, uh, the, the liquid is getting sucked in. Uh, then the, the blades turn round, and there's pretty much only one way uh, where, the, um, where the liquid can go. And that's, uh, let me just put the dot on the uh, discharge thing here. So the dot just went up there. Okay. And that's where the discharge is. Yeah. So that's the only place where the liquid can go. And so uh, what you find around the, uh, they call it the impeller instead of a propeller because it's inside the thing. So um, the impeller, uh, is it working? Very, very slowly. I'm moving the cursor and the red dot sort of follows about four or five seconds later. But anyway, we we try to do the best with this. So, um, so the impeller uh, just moves the liquid around and then shoves it out through a centrifugal force out of the discharge. And, and then obviously you get, um, um, you get a point where, where, where you can determine the velocity, so the speed of the liquid through the pipes. So the faster the impeller turns around, the higher the speed, yeah? and, uh, and also the bigger the suction. Um, there are some advantages, some advantages and some disadvantages. Um, we're going to look at them later. Um, can, you, can you maybe give me an idea. What is the problem with this system? What is the problem with this system? Um, give you a moment to try and think about it. Um, it's a really good idea. It works very well. They're used very often. Lots of energy to start up. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. Um, yeah, big problem. But there's one problem that's even bigger. Think about you've got like a. Um, a tank of some sort, and it's not been used for a long time. And what sometimes happens to the pipes, going to the um, possibly to the to the pump. Corrosion, a good point. Yeah, corrosion is a good point. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this in a, in a minute as well. It's a, it's a massive issue when we when we look at this. Uh, any other ideas? Thanks, Dag, for that. Okay. Right. Uh, let me let me sort of um, give you a little hint. What happens when the pipes are empty? When when there's just air in the pipe? Is it going to work? Uh, 
Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. Um, right. Dick. No, it's not going to work. Yeah. It needs priming. So that means you need to have a liquid at the impeller to make the thing work. So if you've got some just uh, an airlock or something in the in the system, nothing is going to happen. And again, from an engineering point of view, that's very important for you to uh, to remember this. Yeah. So when you've got uh, a centrifugal pump and you don't get anything get, getting through, the problem may not be that the pump's broken, it might just be that there is an airlock or there's not enough liquid in there to generate the suction. So all you need to do is, is somehow put some liquid in there and maybe you can do this from, from the, the discharge point, you know, if you've got some access to the pipe, to pour some liquid in to, to keep the thing going you know, or, or not to keep the thing going, to make it, to start it, to allow it to set off. You know. Okay, so, so that's a problem, one big problem with these pumps. Mm, okay, I'm going to go to the next slide. Oh, here we go. Um, we, again, have got um, just a different view of this. We've got a front view and a side view. And so you can see the inflow, um, and you can see on the side as well there's a shaft, and then also the, the discharge bit. Yeah. Okay, it's... Uh, I don't know, might be interesting, might not be interesting. I've got a few more pictures of them. So I'm just going to go through there. Hey, the next one is coming. No, no, it works very well with the slides. Um, right, that's another picture. Um, it's just like um, a, a side diagram or a side view of, of a pump with uh, the inlets and outlets and everything. Um, quite complex. Um, one of the things, let me just move the, the dot there. Just wait for the dot to come up. I'm moving the cursor. I know the uh, the dot's not coming. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Anyway, when you look on the ah yeah, there it is. There's a dot. Yeah. Let's let me put it back on again. Um, of course, pick up again, and there it is. I was just messing about with the cursor. Now there it is. Okay, there's a red dot. When you look at that one, you've got uh, seals and bearings. Yeah? And um, then when you sort of go a little bit further, I don't know if you can see the seal. The dot's not following. Uh, there you would typically have a seal to try and keep the liquid inside the, uh, the pump and to still allow the shaft to rotate freely. And, uh, and these things are from an engineering point of view, an absolute nightmare because you can't, um, how shall I say, um, it may be okay for liquid, but the thing is turning around all the time, so there's wear and tear. And so it's just a question of time until that thing is going to leak. Then obviously you've got the bearings, which are uh, up and down the shaft, and they were wear as well over time, and once they wear out, they uh, wear down the shaft seals a lot faster as well. So. That's sort of the maintenance point, yeah. So you've got those bearings along the shaft, and then you've got these seals here. Okay, I'm just waiting for the red dot to come back. The seals here to um, to, to sort of try to keep the liquid uh, on the on the pump side, on the impeller side. Okay, I'm gonna go down again. Okay, that's what um, the pump looks like for real. So it's cut open. Uh, let me just go there and talk you through it. So you can see the impeller as well, and you can sort of imagine how the liquid is sucked into the impeller. And when you look on the side here, I'm just going to park the red dot there, uh, that's where the liquid comes out and is sort of slushed against the, uh, the outlet pipe, and uh, it, it goes out, yeah, it comes out. And then on the side here, you would have um, somewhere here, you would have the seals to try and keep the liquid it's probably a bit further down here. I'm just going to try and park the dot there. Um, right about there, you've got um, the seal to, to try and keep the, the liquid uh, inside the, the pump. Yeah. And, uh, and again, we're going to look at, at all the issues as well in a minute of what this is all about. Next one. Hey, slide came straight away. That's good. Just another view. Um, it's just a, a bunch of different views, I thought, to make it a bit more interesting so you can see um, centrifugal pumps, how they work. Uh, in a minute, we're going to look at um, displacement pumps, which is a totally different principle. Um, but they've got some advantages, and the centrifugal pumps have got some advantages. So, uh, so we're going to wear them one against the other, but it's important to sort of understand how the, the differences are. Okay, uh, pretty much like the other pumps as well, uh, you get a gist of... Um, 
how these bumps sort of look like. Yeah. Okay, uh, next slide. So doing it? No. Oh, let me I need to go back on this. Okay, I think I have to go off the button with my cursor and go back on again to try and go to the to the next slide. Just another animated view of a pump and um, Again, one thing you shouldn't forget is uh, whenever you've got a pump, you've got a motor as well. Yeah? So in this instance, we've got the motor. I'm just waiting for the red dot to come. Um, so we've got the motor here. And, um, and, and again, it's, it's, uh, it's an essential part. part. No motor, no, uh, no, no pumping action. But sometimes what you find is you've got uh, the motor and the pump integrated into one unit. Here it looks like there are two separate units uh, connected with a shaft, uh, but obviously you can buy pumps which have got a motor as part and parcel of it, um, and so uh, they're just one integrated unit. Uh, and again, you can see the pump is here. You've got the. Uh, I'm just gonna wait for the dot. The dot is very slow to follow my cursor. Okay, so it's making its way through. <laughs> uh, right. There it is. Okay, so that's the pump where the dot is right now. And then down here you would find the shaft seal as well. I mention the shaft seal all the time because we're going to start talking about it later. And so you, um, you get a rough idea of where it is. And um, you probably get a good, good idea of why it is so important as well. The next one is this displacement pump. They are fundamentally different, completely different concept. Um, a positive displacement pump makes a fluid move by trapping a fixed amount and forcing and displacing the trap volume into the discharge pipe. Uh, some positive displacement pumps use an expanding cavity on the suction side and a decreasing cavity on the discharge side. Okay, it probably it's a lot of words which don't make an awful lot of sense. Uh, positive displacement means it's a bit like an engine yeah, in your car. So you've got a piston, piston goes up and down. It's just the other way around. Um, you explode something in your in your cylinder in your car, like a, a small uh, small mixture of gas, um, fuel, and, and air, and your, your your piston goes up and down. But but again, there's a little bit of displacement as well because as your piston goes up, all the 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 burnt up gases are pushed out, and then the fuel or the you know the the fresh gas with the air from the fuel mixture is is sucked in. And then you get the combustion, and then it's pushed out again, sucked in, and that's where we get the, the four-stroke uh, system from. Um, so that's pretty much very similar concept. Uh, let's have a look at some pictures. Uh, so let me see. I need to go off the button, on the button, and then click it. Doesn't do it. Try again. Oh. I'm trying to go to the next slide. It's, no, it's not that responsive. Uh, wait for a moment. Oh, OK. OK, sorry, Joe. Uh, you're making notes. Uh, let me know when I can move on. Do you want me to go back to the page, or, Joe? Uh, are you okay, Joe, or shall I go back to the page, the previous one? Okay, good. Let's let's move on. Uh, right, what we've got here, we've got um, four different designs of displacement pumps, um, and uh, and and one thing you can sort of see straight away with a displacement pump, you kind of need um, need a liquid, yeah, to some extent. At least these types of displacement pumps. And they are not all of them, there are a few more. We're going to focus into one which is uh, the so-called diaphragm pump. And, um, and again, they, uh, they are ideal for liquids, but you can also use them for gas. Yeah. OK, let's uh, go to the next page. OK, uh, thanks, Joe, for, for the update. Just waiting for the next slide again. Um, very, very slow, the system. Um, right. 
Here we go. So that's a piston-based um, displacement pump. Um, and I'm just waiting for the red dot, and then I can talk you through it the whole bit. So we get a liquid which is um, uh, sucked into um, the, um, the chamber. And, um, and we've got uh, a suction valve which opens. Yeah. And then a suction valve which uh, closes. Yeah. So um, um, it's it's a it's a concept. Oh, there's a red dot just following me now. Uh, so it's a concept where you've got similar to an engine where you've got a piston. Piston goes up and down. Um, when it goes up, yeah, it sucks in the liquid. When it goes down, um, the inlet valve closes and the outlet valve opens up, and it pushes the liquid back back out again. And uh, we're gonna, we've got a few more examples of this, uh, this concept here, and then we'll um, be looking at um, a, a comparison as well. Okay, you can see this here. So this is one of these um, displacement pumps. Um, yeah, I'm just going to let you look, look at it for a short time. Press a button. Uh, okay, uh, we're going to stay a little bit more on this picture here. That's a typical diaphragm pump. Okay, just to sort of give you an idea how it works. So you've got um, um, the a plunger, and the plunger moves forward and backwards. So it's not a rotating shaft as such, but um, it's a forward and backward moving movement. So this is a diaphragm. It's like a membrane, and the membrane is pushed in and out, in and out. So when this membrane is pushed in, um, what happens is this valve here closes and that valve opens up. Yeah. So um, it tries to suck in whatever is below it. Yeah. And the beauty is um, that um, because it's a suction which, which is taking place, um, if the, the liquid is not too thick, so if the viscosity is not too high, um, the um, you can actually survive with just using using you know air so air can be in the system and it's not that much a problem eventually it's going to suck through the liquid providing the liquid the viscosity is not too too big too high so so the, the liquid is not too thick if it's like a, a watery type of liquid it'll um, it'll push it through by just displacing air and then eventually the liquid comes in so that's a huge advantage of a, of a diaphragm pump compared to um, a centrifugal pump. Okay, so again, we've got the inlet valve here. So the the membrane is sort of sucked in. So um, it pulls in air, liquid, whatever is there. And then when it uh, when the the plunger goes back, this plunger goes back in this direction. Um, so it squeezes whatever is inside. So maybe a liquid or, or gas. And then that valve down here. I'm just waiting for the dot to come. That valve down here closes. And that valve up here opens up, yeah, and so it's sort of squeezed out. Again, um, we need shaft seals, yeah. There's, even though it's not a rotary motion, but it's a forward-backward motion. We need uh, a seal around the shaft to make sure that the liquid doesn't, or the gas or whatever we're dealing with, doesn't go through it, that it's protected. Um, we've got an air bleed as well. It's interesting, so we can bleed the air out. And um, yeah, and in here, on the other side of the membrane, there's some sort of hydraulic fluid to, to have like a better effect with the membrane, yeah, to, to get the suction going more effectively. Okay, um, go to the next one, next slide. I'm trying to... Here we go. Displacement pump and motor. Uh, that's what they look like. Um, there's just a motor connected to it. You can't really tell what it is un unless you, you look on the label here. Uh, to me, it actually looks a bit more like a centrifugal pump. You think they've got the centrifugal thing in there. Uh, when I picked it up from the internet, it was actually labeled as a displacement pump. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. But uh, I just wanted to make the point is that, that that thing here, where you see the red dot sort of going along, that's a pump where the pumping action takes place. And behind here, most likely, it's a three-phase motor. Yeah. So that's a motor. It could be a single-phase motor, but that's a motor here. 
uh, that turns the thing around. So sometimes you get them separate, sometimes you get them all in, in one unit. I think from most of them I've seen, they just come all as a unit anyway. It's maybe less messing about. Okay, I'm going to leave this slide up for a moment. Um, so I'm not sure how well you can read it. Actually, I have to put on my glasses. I don't know where I've put them. Right. <clears throat> got him. So we've got a comparison between two pumps. So the first one is a centrifuge, and the mechanics and imparts velocity to the liquid resulting in a pressure at the outlet. Pressure is created and the flow results. And uh, positive, that's for the displacement pump, captures confined amounts of liquid and transfers it from the suction to the discharge port. Flow is created and pressure results. Yeah. Um, again, one is pressure is created and flow results. One, the other one is the other way around. Flow is created and pressure results, just to point this out. Um, the flow varies with changing pressure. Yeah, makes sense as well. So the more pressure you have, the faster it turns round, um, the faster it flows. And here it says the flow is constant with changing pressure. And again, when we look about pressure, um, we have got a pressure built up on either side of the pump. Yeah. On the inlet part, we've got a negative pressure, so it's like a like a suction, a vacuum. On the outlet, depending on what's behind it, we are building up a positive pressure. And that also um, you know, puts a strain on the pump. So we, we have to see how, how this all works together. Okay, viscosity. Viscosity is to do with the liquid, sort of how thick the, the liquid is. And um, uh, it says here the efficiency decreases with increasing viscosity due to frictional losses inside the pump. Um, and efficiency increases with increasing viscosity. Okay, so again, it's the other way around. So one goes down, the other one goes up. And, and, and it depends what are you pumping. So are you pumping, for example, um, um, some slushy liquid, maybe, um, um, you, you, I don't know, maybe, you know, watery flower type of stuff, um, like a, a dough, or what are you pumping? Yeah. And, and one works better with the other. So you've got a very high viscosity, so very thick liquid, uh, it's better to have a positive displacement pump. Uh, you've got a watery liquid. liquid. Uh, it's better to use a centrifugal pump. Yeah. So again, it depends on uh, you know, horses for courses. What do you need it for? Okay, efficiency. Efficiency peaks at best efficiency point. At higher or lower pressures, efficiency decreases. And then for the displacement pump, efficiency increases with increasing pressure. Yeah, the more pressure you put in there, the more efficiency you get. And with the centrifugal pump, you've got an optimum point. You need to find it, and then you get the best efficiency. Okay, um, then the inlet conditions. Liquid must be in the pump to create a pressure differential. A dry pump will not prime on its own. Uh, and then for the displacement pump, we've got um, negative pressure is created at the inlet port. A dry pump will prime on its own. Uh, that's what we said before. Uh, centrifugal pump. If it's dry, it don't work. Um, for um, a displacement pump, it, it will work in dry conditions. So if you've just got air, it'll work and it'll suck in the liquid and eventually you know, pump, start pumping the liquid. Okay, um, quick question, can I move on? Or anybody still taking notes? So yes or no? <laughs> okay. I can move on, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, right. Question, what type of pump is better for liquids with very high viscosities? What pump can be started in dry conditions? What type of pump is ideal to produce pressure at the outlet? Okay, um, 
All right, first one. What pump is better for liquids with high viscosities? Thick liquid, which one is it? Centrifugal or um, displacement? You have the diaphragm one, displacement, good. Uh, what pump can be started in dry conditions? Displacement is why. Uh, what pump is ideal to produce pressure at the outlet? Any answers? Um, yeah, one is better than the other. Uh, let me just go back. Yeah. Oops, you know, I've gone one back too far. It's too responsive now. OK, let's have a look. Okay, so uh, pressure at the outlet, it's uh, the centrifugal one, supposed to be better because it creates pressure to start off with and then um, the flow results, whereas the, the displacement one creates flow and the pressure results. Yeah. So supposedly you can control the pressure a little bit better by, by varying the speed of the, um, of the um, centrifugal pump. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, move on. Shaft seals, that's the next um, <clears throat> little subject which we are dealing with. And um, again, what are the issues with shaft seals? We've got a, a, a pump here, and you can see the shaft here as well, and you can see where the shaft seal is sitting. It was just right there in, in the, um, where the red dot is. Okay, question to you. What are the issues with shaft seals? What problems are we dealing with? Just give me two or three. Yeah, good point. Wear and tear. Uh, one more. Spot on, yeah. So especially in the food industry, so uh, product contamination. Yeah. Um, so when you bear in mind, you, you need oil for the bearings to, and grease to, to keep them greased up. I mean, obviously, you've got food safe um, uh, chemicals or, or grease and oils to do this with. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's a big problem. Uh, and one more? Can you think of one more? Okay, um, <clears throat> I move on. Okay, issues um, with seals on uh, the shaft seals on on pumps. Um, first of all, the shaft is constantly rotating. Yeah. Uh, okay, good point. Uh, excessive heat causing warping. Um, heat is a problem, yeah? not necessarily the warping. Warping obviously is a problem as well if it happens, but, but heat on its own is a problem. And we need to dissipate heat which generates because we've got, inevitably, we, we will have friction between the shaft and the seal. Uh, so we need to minimize wear and tear. Uh, we need to also get rid of the heat that's, that's generated. And, and if there's excessive heat, yeah, you're perfectly right, uh, there's a potential of warping. So, I mean, the shaft is constantly rotating. There's a big potential for wear and tear. Shaft rotates against the stationary casing. Yeah. So, again, which there are two, two sides of it. So you don't, you don't want iron rubbing against iron. So you've got a seal in between. Um, and then to keep the liquids on the other side, yeah, which, of course, makes sense. Pump produces a pressure which will try to force liquid out of the shaft. Yeah. That's, um, that's an important point as well when we've got a... A centrifugal system there's going to be a lot of pressure on the liquid 
And wherever you've got pressure, it, it obviously tries, even where liquids might normally not uh, seep through, once you pressurize the liquid, uh, it'll go through without a problem. Uh, liquid pumped, mm, liquids pump may affect the seal, so that's another one. So it depends, for example, if you've got a, a rubber seal, um, and depending what chemicals you pump, so if you are pumping, for example, petrol or something, um, it'll, the rubber seals will go very, very fast. And so there's a lot of research going in as well uh, into you know, what rubbers work with what chemicals. I, I remember when I was working at the sewage plant, um, there was a company coming to the sewage plant and they were just hanging bits of rubber into um, the sewage. And the sewage was normally considered to be quite aggressive. There are all sorts of chemicals in there. And, and they would just hang them in there for a month and then take them out after a month from the, um, from the sewage pool, the cleaning pool, and, and then look at, uh, look at the rubber and see how it developed and how it uh, sort of rotted away. And it was actually quite interesting to see what these guys were doing. But, um, but that's a big problem with seals as well. So there's a lot of research going into this, or has been going into it, uh, to get the right seals for the right liquids you are, you're likely to pump. Yeah. And then obviously there's uh, the whole maintenance issue. Uh, right, next one. Uh, Um, just a blow up, you can, number 11, supposed to be a seal when you uh, look at this diagram. Um, okay, just going to go to the next one. And uh, you can see a whole bunch of seals as well, that's what they look like. I'm, I'm not sure whether you've worked on pumps before. Uh, if you have, you will have no doubt come across them. Um, and again, you can see some interesting stuff as well. Some of these seals, let me just get the red dot up there. And it goes at the red dot. Uh, you've got a spring here as well, so it puts some pressure on the seal to press it against a surface. Again, it may be um, a way to, to better provide sealing and to have a little bit of flex in the whole thing. Um, okay. You can see down here where the seal uh, is sitting. So you've got the shaft here, and you've got the, um, the seal sitting there to try and keep, keep it out. Okay, I think I've just got a bunch of pictures in there, and we. Yeah, you can see the shaft seal here. For the pump. Uh, again, you see the shaft, and you can see um, the seals. Just going to move on. Um, and this is a marine shaft seal, so this is meant to keep salt water out, and it seems to be some sort of textile they stick in there. And the shaft, which uh, I assume at the other end of the shaft you will find the, uh, uh, the propeller, uh, what do you call it on a, is it a propeller on a ship? And, um, and anyway, you will find that the thing just um, uh, has to deal with salt water. And obviously when you're in a ship and that thing is below water, you don't want any water penetration into, into the ship. I mean, that would be a nightmare. And so you've got these type of seals to try and keep the water out. Um, again, I mean, they must be top quality. They must be really good. Um, you can see as well, this is part of a shaft where seals have been sitting on the shaft itself, where the, um, the shiny bits are. Uh, just a few diagrams. So you've got a bunch of seals in here. And then here you can see the same thing as well. So you've got um, the pump body, the seals are inside, and then the shaft just turns around on the seals. Uh, straight away, I mean, you can see there's friction. Wherever you've got friction, you've got heat. Wherever you've got heat, you've got um, possibly more wear and tear. Um, so you need to have some sort of lubrication to, first of all, minimize the friction, but still keep a seal. And also, if heat is generated, to dissipate the heat. Yeah, so that's the purpose of the, uh, the lubricant uh, for seals. We're going to look at this in a bit more detail in a, in a moment. Okay, next picture. Just a commercial picture of seals, shaft seals you can get. Let's keep it up for a moment and then I move on. Okay. Lubrication of shaft seals. Why is it necessary to have some type of lubrication for shaft seals? Um, mentioned it. Can you think of anything else? Why, why we lubricate? So, so far we said it's... Um, um, 
obviously keeping it slick, minimize friction, um, sealing it, yeah, making sure that there's a better seal, a better connection between the, the lip of the seal and the shaft, and um, then heat dissipation as well. I think that's it. I don't think there's, there's any other. Let's have a look. Maybe I've forgotten one. <coughs> yeah, okay. So there are the reasons. So we've got to reduce wear and tear uh, of the seals as they might run on dry surfaces, no friction, and then provide uh, additional sealing as well. Yeah, so that's, that's important. Okay, next one. Lubrication of shaft seals. It's necessary for a radial shaft uh, seal to seal efficiently over a long period of time. Makes sense. Yeah. We d we've got a pump. We don't want it to uh, replace it once a month. should last a bit longer than that. Uh, the sealing lip must be lubricated. So that's the part of the seal that touches the shaft. Um, this reduces friction and wear to the sealing lip and to the shaft as well. It's an interesting point as well. So... Um, there's wear on the shaft itself as well, and we need to minimize this, and that's one way of doing this. Uh, the, lubricant, can't, the lubricant is used to dissipate heat generated by the seal. Yeah. Again, very important point. Yeah. Okay, move on to the next one. Did anybody want to take notes or copy before I move away from here? Let me just go back. You want me to keep it up for a moment? Or can I move on? Move on, yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay, uh, oil lubricated shaft. Um, let me just get the red dot. So you can see the lubricant here. It's just like some sort of oil. Uh, the oil obviously flows down the pipe, and then we've got the shaft seal here, and uh, the shaft gets lubricated. And you might just have like a, a little opening, sort of a few micrometers or something, and uh, it's just like a tiny amount of this lubricant going through. And um, yeah, that's, that's one way of doing this. So you've got an oil-lubricated shaft. And uh, I'm not quite sure what they do on, on boats, but I would imagine that um, maybe the water is enough of a lubricant, which is there. The fact that they use a textile should suggest that uh, the water goes into the textile and um, it bloats it up a bit and it seals itself by, by absorbing the water. But, but again, I don't know. I'm not a marine expert. I, I was just looking at this wondering, um, you know, with ships and how this works. Okay, so we've got water lubricated systems as well. It's interesting. So you can use water for lubrication. Maybe in, in the mar marine world, uh, that's what they are using because that's what they have, you know, plenty of it. And um, yeah, that's just one shaft sealer, sealing um, unit which uses water as a lubricant. Okay, uh, next one. Okay, the good old grease gun. Yeah. Um, let me just get the little dot and put it on here. So that thing, this drum, um, I used to work on something like this when I was working in the steelworks, and, um, and they use it for deburring uh, or degrading sort of screws and things like that where they've got like a sharp edge and they try to, to get them off. And um, anyway, it's just like a, a massive washing machine. And my Monday morning job was uh, to go around with a grease gun and uh, to squeeze some grease into all the grease nipples which I could find on each of the motors to make sure that, that they were maintained. Yeah, and I had to squeeze as much grease in there until the old grease came out and then I wiped off the old grease and then I was ready to go for another week. Um, and, uh, and again, it's just uh, it's old technology. It's been around for 150 years, the grease gun with the grease nipples. You just go around, you grease up everything and everything works fine now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the grease is made up of, but uh, it was horrible stuff. If you got it on your clothing, um, like on your overalls, uh, it was really hard to get the stuff out, but, but it worked. 
uh, right. Next slide. Okay, um, a task. So we've got uh, a water pump for your car. Yeah, that's actually what you find on your, on your car. Um, and it pumps around the water. And I've got three questions to you. I mean, most of you are driving cars. So first of all, what type of pump is it? Is it centrifugal or a displacement pump? Then the next one is, how is a water pump in your car greased? Um, how does it actually work? And then the last one is, how is it driven? So what drives the water pump in your car? Yeah. Internal gear pump? Yeah. Uh, which one is it though? Is it centrifugal or displacement? Uh, Joe, centrifugal, yeah, correct, spot on. It's a centrifugal pump, yeah. So it uses, you can see this, uh, let me just get the red dot. Um, you can see this on here, you know, the, the water gets sucked in, you know, towards the middle, and then it's sort of squeezed out on the edges, and it's, it's moved through the system. So it's, it clearly is a centrifugal pump. So that means in order to work, you have to have water in there. And the problem is if you've got an airlock in your, um, in your cooling system, you've got a bit of a problem. Um, okay. Uh, normally you need to, you know, spend a bit of time to try to get the airlock out. Um, next one is how is it greased? What greasant is used for this? Or what lubricant? Um, no, even though you've got oil in your car, but it doesn't go anywhere near the water pump. It's a little bit of a tricky question, but let's see. Spot on, spot on, Joe. It's a coolant, yeah? It's a coolant that, that's greasing it. And uh, which part of the coolant? <laughs> you normally have got two parts in there. You've got water and antifreeze. What is responsible for greasing? That's the reason why. Any answers? Just waiting? No? <laughs> Is it the water or the antifreeze that's doing the uh, greasing, the lubrication? I mean, lubrication is like making it wet, so obviously it should be water, but... Okay, no answers? Okay. Um, it's... Uh, yeah, partly, partly. The, the problem you've got with water, water is... One of you guys mentioned it earlier, it's, it's very corrosive. And, um, and it, it'll actually corrode the shaft and, and things like that over time. And so um, the antifreeze, the glycol, is normally used to, um, to provide a certain amount of lubrication and protect the metal bits in the pump as well, yeah, keeping it longer. So even if you live like in a climate where it never freezes, it's a good job to put some antifreeze in your coolant uh, just for the purpose of um, keeping corrosion away from the metal bits inside your uh, system and also to lubricate the, the water pump, yeah. so the glycol, um, or the, the antifreeze normally does this. Um, okay, so that's the water pump. How is it driven? How is your water pump driven in your car? So what makes it turn around? Does anybody know? Uh, yeah, it can be actually. actually, it can be the timing belt. Uh, I'm just trying to think, have I come, come across cars with a with, uh, timing belt? Um, yeah, the, the fun belt, yeah. The fun belt, you normally have got two belts. You've got the timing belt or timing chain these days. And it could be, theoretically, it could be. Yeah. And you, when you look at um, this one here, uh, it, it almost looks like it could be a timing belt to turn the thing around. Um, but normally it's a fun belt, you know, especially on older cars. It's a fun belt, uh, which you know goes around the alternator and comes from the drive shaft, comes goes around the alternator and then 
the other uh, thing it turns around is a water pump. Yeah. A big problem is if the um, um, the the fan belt goes, it's a big problem because the engine is going to heat up yeah, quite quite rapidly because you don't have that much convection going. You still have got some movement of uh, the liquid through the car to cool down, but you don't have any uh, convection, uh, forced convection. You have you have convection, but you don't have forced convection. The forced convection would be done through the centrifugal pump, and and that's a problem. So your car heats up, and, and you have to be very careful. You you don't have much time before your engine goes. Okay, uh, we are almost to the end at the end of the presentation, and we are just about right in time, despite all the slow slides. Okay, um, try it. List five issues you may have with shaft seals. Give it a go. Where is one? Okay, thanks. Leaking is one. Okay, three more. Heat, yeah, generates heat. So we need to deal with that. Two more. Cracks, yeah, it's a good one. Cracks. Seal is cracked, you can throw it away. Yeah, it's it's going to leak. You have to replace it. One more. Wrong seal for the material, yeah. Spot on, yeah. So if you don't um, have, for example, if you use petrol and you've got, um, you know, some rubber seal for a pump that's been made for water and which is excellent on water, um, if you then pump petrol through it, uh, the seals might go in no time. They might just disintegrate. And then uh, that's the end of your pump. Okay, um, so I'll try to go to the next page. So I need to go up and down again. And yeah, so that's a little list. Uh, wear and tear, it's a maintenance item. Yeah, so it, it goes. So it's also a point, you know, with um, plant preventative maintenance that um, there could be a policy that, you know, whenever you've got a company shutdown or when a line is closed, um, that you may use the time to change the seals and all the pumps. Um, there's obviously philosophy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but on the other side, you know, eventually it's going to go. And most um, pumps, they, they will have a guaranteed uptime uh, from the manufacturer or a suggested uptime. Once you go beyond this, it's, it makes sense to, 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 to change them. The type of liquids used in the pump, which you said, affecting the seal. Pressure buildup in the pump, so pressure is also uh, an issue. Serviceability, uh, is it difficult to get to or not? Yeah, so that's a decision when you buy the pump. You know, how serviceable is it? How easy is it to change all the components? Uh, we've got shaft wear, so the shaft could wear down. And, and then another big issue is, is the seals. Yeah. Um, it would be interesting as well if you go to your company stores or do you, uh, do you check on the stocks they have of a particular seal to, to see whether it's actually in stock or whether you have to order it from the manufacturer. And if you have to order from a manufacturer, like a job that should take about one hour, suddenly takes about two or three days because you have to order the parts. Even if it's overnight order, the line might be down for, for more than 25 hours, which, um, which is a problem. Okay, uh, the last one, summary. I've got two summary slides. Um, there are two types of pumps, um, name them. Which are they? Should do this now. <laughs> Come on, guys. What types of pumps have you got? Centrifugal and displacement, spot on. Thank you. List one advantage for each type of pump. Uh, Abby, hi. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, th this talk is going to be on uh, YouTube later on. I'm going to send uh, an email around. Um, I don't know what the channel is called. I think it's called Thermodynamics or something, the YouTube channel. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to send an email with the link. And she's gone. Okay, this um, one, uh, one advantage for each type of pump. One for centrifugal, one for displacement.
Come on, be brave. Nothing? Okay. Okay, one of them, you can build up pressure. That's just one example. That's a centrifugal one. You can uh, vary the pressure on the outlet. And the other one is you can suck in stuff even though it's dry. That's for the displacement pump. Uh, we talked about shaft seals. And we talked about lubrication. I'll leave it for now. Um, I'm going to go to the uh, next and last slide. Still refusing to go forward. Here we go. Uh, so that's what we did today. So we looked at uh, application of different types of pumps, the application of shaft seals, and the need uh, and the equipment used for lubrication of seals. So that's all we did today. Okay, guys, I want to thank you for, for tuning in. And uh, any feedback, more than welcome. Uh, obviously, last week was a disaster. This week, uh, still some problem with the, you know, moving from slide to slide. I don't know whether it's... Uh, the software, the conference software, or whether it's uh, the internet connection, no idea, but um, I'll give it a go and try and figure out. The talk is going to be available on YouTube later on. Uh, on YouTube itself, it, it'll just be the slides and, and my voice. On, um, um, on here on the side, and I'm not quite sure whether it's possible to get hold of them. It seems to be possible, but um, I have to check it out. I have to dig into it one more time. Um, it should be available on the side as well, so it's been recorded on the side. So, guys, I wish you a good weekend. Have a, a great Saturday and Sunday, and um, I'll see you next week. So next week we're going to uh, talk about gas pumps, yeah, everything about gas, pumping gas through hot air and stuff like that. Lots of hot air next week uh, through systems. Okay, anyway, have a great weekend, and uh, thanks, for, thanks for tuning in today. Bye-bye.